Welcome back everyone. In my video today, I will be discussing how to obtain a credit card. But before I get into details on how to obtain one, I will first like to clear the air. Have you or anyone else ever thought the reason why you've never been approved for a credit card is because you didn't have any credit? Well, I'm happy to tell you that's not the reason why. It's not that you don't have no credit. The problem is you have low credit. The lowest number on a credit score is 300. So with that being said, there's no such thing as zero credit. Everyone that has a social security number has credit. So let's get started. What is a credit card? A credit card is a loan allowing you to receive goods and services now and pay for them later. A credit card is different from a debit card. With credit, it's someone else's money. With debit, it's your money. A credit card is not an income. Reality is, you will spend more with a credit card than a debit card. Now that I explain what is a credit card, next I'm going to discuss why it's important to have a credit card. With the credit card, you're able to make big purchases such as buying a house or a car, depending on your credit limit, helps build your credit, and you're able to obtain rewards and points when you use your credit card. For those who have a low credit score and want to obtain a credit card, my advice is to apply for a secure credit card. A secure credit card is a type of credit that is backed by cash deposit from the cardholder. The cash deposit is used as collateral on your account. Having low credit, lenders assume that you are risky and not to be trusted. So because of that, they will ask you for money up front. And if you're in default with your credit card, the lender will use the cash deposit you've given them when you first opened up a secure credit card to pay it off. Please do not think that because you gave them money up front, it's okay to miss a payment. You are still required to make your monthly minimum payment because if not, like I mentioned before in my previous video on credit, it will drop your credit score minimum 100 points and you don't want that. Typically, the cash deposit you've given up front is the credit limit they start you off with. When you ask for an increase on your credit card, your lender won't ask you for a bigger deposit down because you're basically spending your own money rather than someone else's. And that's considered a debit card rather than a credit card. Here I'm gonna show you how to apply for a secure credit card online. You can also do this in person as well. You go on Google, you type in secure credit card and hit enter. The first one that came up is Capital One. For Capital One, they have a secure MasterCard and they're saying that there's a refundable deposit of $49, $99, or $200. So I keep scrolling and the next bank I see is Bank of America. So on Bank of America's site, it gives you card details about a secure credit card. And with Bank of America, you need to have a security deposit of $300 minimum or a maximum of 4900 When they say maximum, this is the max you can give them to have an initial credit limit for your card. So if you give them $4,900, you're going to receive a credit limit of $4,900. Bank of America will also show you the details and the benefits of having a secure credit card with them. My favorite is Discover. So for Discover secure credit cards, they have a uh, facts and questions and any type of questions you have for them, they'll have the answers for it. And that's why I love it. It also show you how it works. So to apply and provide a deposit, you need a minimum of $200 with Discover to open up a secure credit card. Also, what I like about Discover is you can convert your secure credit card to an unsecure credit card. So when you apply, all you do is just provide all your information and then they're going to ask you for your bank account. And if you don't have one, you can always create a check and or savings account with them. If you have low credit, get a secure credit card. I guarantee you, you'll get approved. Now, for those who have low to moderate credit score, I suggest to start off with a store card like JCPenney, Old Navy, Cole. My advice is to obtain a store card from a store you don't typically shop at. Because if you're obsessed with, let's say, Victoria's Secret and you open up a store card with them, you're more likely to max out that credit card. And that's what we're trying to avoid doing. So if you're trying to build your credit, open up a store card with a store you barely shop at. That way you don't have missed payments or you maxed out the credit card. And most importantly, it will be more easy to maintain. Now be aware store credit cards have high interest rates. That's another reason why I say obtain a store card from somewhere you don't typically shop at because with high interest rates, if you don't pay it off on time, psh, good luck. If you don't want to open up a store card and you feel like it's risky or you're not as responsible, 
become an authorized user on someone else's card preferably your guardian. As an authorized user, you're not at fault nor responsible for what happens with the credit card, but the card holder is. What I do is I will allow someone to become an authorized user, but I don't give them the card. It's not that I don't trust them, but if I have hold of the card, I don't have to worry about what they spending or if they gave me the money on time by the due date. I'll use the card how I normally do and the person that's on the card is still benefiting from it. So in conclusion, become an authorized user on someone's card and let them have the card. However, if you need a credit card because you know you're going to spend, then that's something you should discuss with them. Now that I gave you ways on how to obtain the credit card, let's go into which credit cards are best for you. For those who have great credit and is looking for a credit card that suits them, here is how I suggest going about it. First, write down things you like to do. So if you like to travel, if you love food, going to concerts, why? Because there are credit cards that cater to each one of those activities you like. If you like to travel, you can obtain an airline credit card. And while American Express have credit cards that are suitable for travelers. I have an American Express Platinum card. When I go to the airport, buy an airplane ticket, or buy something on a plane, I get five times the points. Five times the points. And points can accumulate to pay for future items or pay for items that are already on my credit card statement. If you're a college student, apply for a college credit card. Discover has credit cards suitable for college students where if you have a 3.0 or higher, they'll give you $20. $20 just for having good grades. You can't beat that. Annual fee is low, interest is low. That's perfect for college students. Now that we know what is a credit card, why it's important to have a credit card, how to obtain a credit card, credit cards that are suitable for you, let's get into how to maintain a credit card. In order to maintain a credit card, you need to understand what a credit card consists of. So let's get to it. The factors that I use to make up a credit score are the same factors that are needed to maintain a credit card. With the credit card comes great responsibility. So with that being said, I hope you guys understand everything on this agenda. Comment down below. If you have any questions, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button because there are more contents coming to you.